The year is 2014, and YouTube launches the last of its great vintage toy restoration channels. In a freak mishap, Toy Poloi is thrown out of the forums and into an orbit which freezes his internet access. Returning Toy Poloi to our screens 500 years later. Welcome to Toy Poloi. Hello and welcome to another video from Toy Poloi and this is part three of the Buck Rogers Mego Starfighter restoration and customization project. Now in part two I put all of the wiring and electronics inside this Starfighter so that we could get some lights. It's got lights on the engines, has a light inside the cockpit and also some lasers that flash at the front. And at the end of that video I got it mainly working. There was a few issues with some light bleed coming out of the front of the ship. Now I've done a bit of work to try and sort of reduce that light bleed by painting more black paint on the inside of the front section of the ship and that has worked quite well. I still need to do some work on these uh, sort of nose cones that where the lasers fire out because those still do glow quite a lot and as you can see I've started to do that on this uh, rear one here. I've started to give it a sort of a top coat of paint and also trying to make it match the colour of the plastic. It's still a little bit yellow that one so we're going to repaint that but I think by painting these more uh, that should stop the light bleed so we're going to get to work on this one and we'll get both of them to match and hopefully reduce the amount of uh, light that bleeds out of them. So that's the first job that we need to do uh, before we go on to anything else on this project. Here we have the two nose cones and you can see this is the one that I haven't uh, painted and it's a very bright white and really doesn't match the sort of slightly yellowed tone of the plastic. And as I said in the very first video we actually want to keep this sort of yellow tone because the original Starfighter is this more sort of creamy colour. So this bright white doesn't really work. Uh, what I've done is I've mixed up a couple of Vallejo paints to make a sort of, well it just it's more like a bone white. It's still a little bit bright actually. You can see here it's just a little bit too sort of bony white so I need to add a bit more white to that. But the overall effect makes it look a lot more in keeping with the sort of colours of the main part of the ship. So I'm going to do another coat of paint on this one. You actually need to put a couple of coats of paint on to stop the light bleeding through the plastic. This plastic seems to be quite thin or so it certainly makes the light shine really brightly inside it so uh, a few coats on the outside helps. Also because these are 3D prints there's quite a sort of rough surface to them where all the print lines uh, sort of get built up and so adding the paint has actually softened that quite nicely. It really is starting to look like a much smoother finish to it and once I'm really happy with the colour of this I'm going to give it a spray uh, with a clear lacquer and that will sort of give it the same sort of sheen that, it, that the original plastic has. So what we've got to do is uh, just mix up some paint and uh, get these all painted I will also be putting more black paint inside. You can see this one I've completely painted the inside black. Again that is to stop the light bleeding out. I need to do the same on the other one but so this is my sort of test piece. So for the colours I'm using Vallejo model paints. Uh, these are uh, numbers 70.951 which is white and 70.953 which is a flat yellow. You basically need a lot of white and a very small amount of yellow and it will go a sort of bony colour like this one. Uh, as I say though I put a little bit too much yellow in the last coat of that one so I'm going to put a lot less in. So mix your paints up well. I've already given these a good shake. I'm going to put a large amount on here and then just a very tiny amount of yellow to one side and I'll get mixing and I'll get all of these painted up. And uh, This one's not bad, just that little bit too yellow. So as I say, I'm going to mix it slightly differently this time and put an extra coat on that one. But they will need two or three coats anyway.
So you can see there, that's the uh, first coat on this one on the left. It covers reasonably well, but we want it much thicker than that. So I've got to put another, at least two coats on that just to stop the light bleeding through the plastic. But the uh, color I'm pretty happy with. That's uh, certainly starting to look like the uh, same shade as the ship. It's uh, not going to stand out quite as much as the original sort of print the colour would have. It's now a couple of coats later. I've let them dry in between. I've also sprayed on some uh, clear top coat, which is just a Tamiya clear spray. And you can see that the end result is that they actually look uh, pretty reasonable. They're starting to look more like a plastic finish than the uh, 3D print. They've got a bit of a sheen to them. And the colour match, it's not perfect, but it's as close as I think I'm going to get. They uh, certainly don't stand out anymore. They don't look so sort of bright white. So I think no, I'm pretty happy with how those are. The last thing we need to do is to paint the insides of them. You can see this one, I've already painted every part of it black, so we'll leave that one. And this was the other one that I hadn't done any work to. So I'll just take the uh, bit of blue tack out from inside. That was only there just so I could sort of hold it and paint it. Now you can see inside, if I move my hand away, it's not quite fully black. I painted quite far down but not right to the bottom and I need to uh, get that fully black. So again I'm just going to use this as some Vallejo uh, model colour. This is uh, number 70.950 and is a black. I've given it a good shake already and rather lazily I think all I'm going to do is actually just squirt some of this inside, do a little blob and then sort of roll it around. Uh, I probably could get a brush in there, but it's it's quite far down. Um, a big blob of paint in there. Let's try with a brush. Just sort of roughly paint it around. And really all I want to do is make sure every part of this is covered in black. It doesn't have to be neat at all. It's all hidden inside the toy. But I think, yeah, that looks uh, sort of as covered as it's going to get. Now we can let all of this dry. I'm going to let everything dry for a good day. Make sure everything is sort of fully that's set and uh, then we'll try this on the toy but I think uh, those are now ready to go and hopefully we won't have any more light bleed. While I'm waiting for the paint to dry it gives me the opportunity to do one of the other jobs I wanted to get done on this uh, Starfighter and that is to make some cockpit glass for the cockpit. As you can see here there is nothing in here so uh, it doesn't look like uh, Buck is safe when he's out in space because there's literally nothing stopping him from being uh, sucked out of these uh, window holes. So it's uh, just a simple job really to make some new panels because these are actually pretty flat. There's a slight curve to them, but they are pretty flat. So it's going to be a fairly straightforward job to do. And what I've done is I've taken a couple of pieces of paper like this, you can see, and I've just pushed this in here and sort of drawn around where the edges are. So I've got that piece for the top section. I've also done the same on the side. And that gives me a rough template of uh, what the shapes are for these surfaces. I've taken that into Photoshop and very quickly made a pattern, which I have here. So you can see that is my pattern for these windows. We have two side panels and this top panel. There's a slight curve to these. These aren't straight lines. If you look at this ship, it does have a slight curve to it. And what we're going to do is we're going to use some thin sheets of uh, acetate uh, and we'll, we'll make the panels out of that. Now I've previously used acetate to make uh, sort of cockpit glasses for things like snow speeders and other Star Wars vehicles and you can buy it very cheaply. You can see here I've got whole loads of sheets of it uh, and this is the thickest sort of acetate that I can buy. Uh, it's the sort of stuff that you would use for overhead projectors um, but it's quite nice and it's quite clear as well and it's very easy to work with. So I've, uh, as I say this comes from eBay. I've got loads of it. I think there's sort of 15 on more sheets here and I slowly sort of work my way through it on different projects and this is what we are going to use. I have the remnants of a sheet here that I've previously used for something else. You can see I've cut away lots of the edges but there's enough in the middle uh, so I'm going to just use that. All you do is you lay that over the pattern. I'm actually going to tape this in place, just put a few bits of sellotape around to hold it and I'm going to get a knife and carefully cut out these three pieces and then we can go about applying them inside the cockpit. So as you can see, I've just put a couple of bits of tape top and bottom just to hold this in place. Now, a lot of these aren't straight lines. They've got a slight curve to them. So I'm just going to cut free form with a knife and cut as neatly as I can. You will see in the middle panel actually has a front to it. So always make sure that that is round the right way. The front of the cockpit is slightly thinner than the back. So it's actually quite important that you know where that is. But let's just get cutting.
and here are the three pieces that need to that you cut them the better but you can be a little bit rough around the edges because a lot of it is going to be hidden by the sort of paneling that's on the side but you can see here that is one of the side panels and that's going to fit quite nicely and as for sticking it in you can see I've already applied some double-sided tape uh, sort of only around the areas where you really can get a sort of thick bit of tape so there's some here some in the middle some at the end and a few panels here so you don't really need to have that much around again as you can't really sort of press onto the uh, glass and once it's stuck in with these few pieces it should be fine so I've got myself a pair of tweezers here so I'm just going to remove the other side of the double-sided tape and I'll start sticking these in I'm going to do the side panels first and then the middle one at the end but uh, really you can do it in any order you want. go that's uh, it with the acetate stuck in place as you can see it makes it look a whole lot better it really does look like a cockpit that would work the pattern for this I will be putting on toyploy.com so you can go and download that for free if you want to add your own uh, glass to this uh, Mego Starfighter uh, and really you could use anything to stick this in as you can see this is double-sided tape it does the job quite nicely uh, you could use glue if you wanted but I've always found the double-sided tape to work really quite well especially on a surface like this where it's pretty flat and you can sort of bend the acetate around there's no real pressure pressure put on the uh, sticky tape it doesn't tend to pull away but it does make quite a big difference I think that's going to look really great when we put it on the Starfighter. The nose cones are now dry and I've reinserted the little bit of Lego into the sort of laser hole that you see there and that really there's one thing left to do and that's to give them a try as you can see the colour match is not too bad at all it's still uh, a little bit different but you'll always get that with the difference between some, an item that is painted and something that is made out of plastic so I'm overall very happy with how they look and by the time you've added stickers to the rest of the ship I don't think you'll even notice that these are sort of a slightly different uh, finish uh, the overall effect is very good so uh, let's test them now and see if the light bleed has been fixed okay so here are the lights flashing and that's working a whole lot better there's certainly a, a lot less light bleeding around the, the edges of everything Thing. there's a little bit of a bleed here where the two parts of uh, the main body join together not sure I can do anything to sort of fix that I can try putting a little bit more paint there but it's just around that edge there you can see just a little bit there likewise we've got the same on this side so it's a sort of similar issue I'll see if I can put a bit more paint uh, sort of around those but otherwise that's working a lot better there's certainly uh, no bleed coming through these uh, sort of uh, prongs apart from where the lights shine through so yeah that is how I want it to look and we've got some nice lasers firing at the front so yeah I think that will have to do now and there we go that's it for this part of the video we've managed to get quite a lot more done I'm much happier with how these uh, lasers are working the little bit of light bleed on the side as I showed in that previous shot I think is acceptable but now they match in color in the next video we will get on with sorting out these stickers making much more screen accurate stickers to apply on this ship there's a lot of areas to cover on that so it's going to take quite a long time to make the stickers and make them look as close to the uh, show ship as possible and there's one final bit of painting as well that I need to do which is uh, on the back here Robert asked if uh, these uh, engines uh, could be the same color all the way down on the original model they, they, this sort of gray piece should actually extend right up to here but obviously for making it a toy they split it at uh, sort of across the middle so we're going to repaint this section as well and then I think the uh, ship should look really quite impressive it's already looking a lot better than it did at the beginning of this video in the videos I try to cover sort of different aspects of uh, what I'm working on in this one I think making the uh, cockpit glass has made quite a big difference and I'm actually going to be adding that to the uh, original version of the Starfighter that I have because I think that's a really nice thing to do and if you want to do that yourself then the file is available for free from toyploy.com so go and download it from there so I hope you've enjoyed this video if you have then make sure to hit the subscribe button and tap the bell to be notified each time I upload a new video and thanks for watching Thanks for watching Toy Ploy. Subscribe for more great videos. You can also follow Toy Ploy on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram.